Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the daily chart of silver overlaid with the Dow Jones Industrial 30 average provided by netdania.com. So let me explain this chart to you. What I'm trying to isolate here is this tremendous divergence that we have going on between paper assets and real assets. You can see that this divergence pretty much started uh, right around the election, a little after the election, through the end of last year and uh, all the way up until now. So we're talking three to four months that this has been going on and uh, you can see that this is the direction of the Dow paper assets, this is the direction of silver. Silver is trading the equivalent of 11,000 on the Dow and uh, the Dow is trading at the equivalent of $50 silver. So my contention is that this is probably going to break uh, one way or the other very soon. One of these is going to have to change direction. Now the only other uh, example that we have of this, it's not nearly as extreme, is the example that we get from the midpoint of the run in silver where it ran from about 1750 to 50 and you can see the pullback that's where we had the Dow increasing silver going down ultimately resolved in silver turning around and uh, breaking through the Dow price and continuing all the way to that top so are we get, getting ready to set up for something similar to that it's quite possible something big is setting up here now the other thing is the increasing volume that we have ignore this previous volume that's just missing data but you can see the rising trend line and this massive massive volume that we have coming in here on virtually no price movement so that's a very unique uh, and interesting anomaly that we have forming there as well my guess is that we have a very very large number of paper players coming in and making a stand that the banks that are pushing down the price of silver using derivatives are unable to push it any lower than this so we may be looking at a catastrophic uh, battle between these two forces uh, and uh, they're definitely squared off now let's look real quick at the year-to-date returns although uh, silver has been a lot of people are maligning it and it's been uh, a hated asset uh, the sentiments very negative you can see for the year it's down about 4.4 percent gold's down about 5.5 percent uh, then uh, really there's not much here of note if you look at the currencies everything is pretty much flat it's except when you look at the crosses of the Japanese yen so the US dollar yen is almost 12% then the euro yen 10% and uh, the Australian dollar against the yen is 10% as well uh, the pound is not nearly as high because the pound has been getting crushed as well so they're still crushing the yen you can see in the action tonight that uh, the price is again on a tear let's pull out to say the 30 minute uh, they're they're continuing uh, to print money in Japan that's where all the action is and uh, we have to wait and see how that's going to resolve itself I honestly thought that we had found a top when we hit this but they turned it around and they've taken it farther seems to be breaking out even farther so the yen is being rapidly devalued that seems to be where the paper uh, bankster manipulators are uh, concentrating their efforts for whatever reasons so let's look at the main story of the night and that's going to be trying to visualize silver and uh, how much there is and uh, how much money there is and uh, just to get an idea of what we're talking about here how undervalued of an asset it is so let's uh, go to Demonocracy. I think you've probably seen these. They're often they're uh, covered by Zero Hedge, and these are the visuals that give you an idea of uh, the size of debts and other things uh, 
Uh, so you can see that we start out here, we've got a stack of $100 bills to give you the dimensions, and then we've got uh, 5, 10 grams of silver, a troy ounce of silver, and uh, then 100 and 250 grams of silver. Uh, as we go down, you can see uh, these aren't really used for, for uh, Americans who don't uh, value, don't, don't normally measure silver in, in kilograms, but uh, this is a, a useful one here. This is one ton of silver and that equals one million dollars at thirty one dollars troy ounce so there's an example of one million dollars in physical silver that's how much silver you're talking about now the next is going to show you the tons of silver and here's a thousand tons a hundred tons and ten tons so let's uh, look and see how the how large those are when we're talking about what we have on the LBMA and the COMEX. Now the other categories that we have listed here are going to be uh, this is the reserves in other words these are the official holdings these are reserves that uh, supposedly could come on to market although you can see uh, with what they're made up of a lot of that probably wouldn't come on to market except for much much higher prices but uh, they're composed of uh, the BMG Bullion Fund, the Silver ETF ZKB, Canadian Maples Minted LBMA Estimated Stocks, the Central Fund of Canada Estimated Private Bullion, COMEX Warehouses, uh, U.S. Eagles Minted, and the Silver ETF. So you can see that the Silver ETF is the biggest one here, uh, followed by the Silver Eagles. But the ones I wanted to concentrate on are the... COMEX warehouse stocks and the LBMA stocks just because those are the ones that can be delivered against investment demand the others it's going to take uh, a significantly higher price to pull that uh, metal out of the strong hands that are holding it uh, we know anecdotally from uh, Ranning Andy and others that uh, we're talking about a 99 to 1 uh, buyers versus sellers for physical silver so I think not much of that is going to come back on the market but let's look at uh, those amounts now here's the total amounts of uh, silver mined in all of history and uh, the amount lost throughout history is almost as great as the amount that's still in existence of course it's all still in existence it's not lost it's just uh, unrecoverable due to the low price but uh, you can see those are about equal amounts. But let's go back and look again at the COMEX and the LBMA stock. So we're talking about 3,500 tons on the COMEX, 2,300 tons on the LBMA. So let's get an idea of how much that is. Uh, this is a handy calculator, conversion calculator for tons. And uh, so we said about 3,500 tons over there on the COMEX and you can see that that converts to about 123 million ounces of silver and uh, that's going to be roughly a um, billion dollars I'm sorry that's going to be roughly three three and a half billion dollars or so uh, let's do the math real quick just so we don't get it wrong so that is 123 million ounces Let's do 120 million times, we'll say 30. So, yeah, I, I, like I said, about $3.5 billion. So, we're talking about $3.5 billion on the COMEX, and then we're talking about less on the LBMA, so uh, maybe $2.5 billion there. So let's, uh, now you can see this truck here, that's interesting because they, they intersperse the money, uh, the cash with the uh, silver and uh, that uh, amount of money, you can see the money stacks when we look at stacks of $100 bills, this is the derivatives uh, amount. So keep those figures in mind that we were talking about, about three and a half billion and uh, on the COMEX about two and two and a half billion on the LBMA those are deliverable ounces in the silver market so when we look at the money stacks here you can see here's your billion dollars and uh, if we look down here at this truck 
and I think that's the same truck that we have here. Uh, that's our truck full of money and that's about two billion dollars. So uh, that's going to be about enough to buy all of the silver on the LBMA. Now as we go down and look and see how much money we're talking about in the derivatives markets you can see the different banks are listed but let's look at one of the uh, big boys in this and that's going to be JP Morgan and uh, there's our truck that's the amount of money that it would take to buy all of the silver on the LBMA or two of those trucks to buy all of the silver on the COMEX and here is Goldman Sachs and here is uh, Bank of America and Citibank and this is JP Morgan so you can see that the amount of derivatives and that's going to be a 70 trillion dollars outstanding dwarfs the amount of silver uh, just a mere pittance of any of that money going into silver uh, would completely wipe out all of the deliverable stocks on the COMEX and the LBMA in uh, one fell swoop and here is the total here are all the derivatives added together uh, you can see our little truck here in front and you know that uh, if we go back to our silver that those deliverable uh, amounts there are maybe four times larger than that truck so all the silver that can be delivered would fit right in here and there's all the stacks of hundred dollar bills so that gives you an idea of the uh, disparity between paper and silver uh, a real asset and a fake asset a, a debt obligation and uh, there is very very little silver and there's a lot of paper now it's interesting that that is what we're seeing with the cross of the Dow and with silver we're seeing the paper go up and obviously in my in my mind that's continuing the manipulation and we're seeing the real asset go down I don't think that can continue forever uh, it's continued a lot longer than I thought it could but I do believe that uh, these volume indications coming in here are telling us that someone is taking a stand uh, in the paper market and you have to remember that in the paper market there always is the threat of taking delivery that's always a possibility it doesn't mean that people who are doing this are intending to take delivery but there is always that off chance that the people who have accumulated uh, many of these contracts will decide and announce that they're going to take delivery and of course if they did that then uh, that would be a complete wipeout for the paper uh, derivative manipulators because they just simply couldn't deliver the silver uh, the amount of contracts that have been bought uh, anywhere near that because we know that the amount of paper silver that's traded every day is uh, can be as high as one or two times all the silver mined in the entire world so uh, they're painting themselves into a corner I don't know how long this can go uh, the rally in the Dow has been absolutely phenomenal. You have to remember in inflation adjusted dollars though, it's not the most significant. But still, this is one of the longest running uh, bull markets we've had for a while. You can see that the bull market that ran from 1995 through the top of the NASDAQ bubble, that was about four years. This one is currently running 2009 to 2013, so we're almost... Uh, this bull market is almost as old and of course this one uh, went almost five years a little bit over four years so uh, this one is getting long in the tooth and uh, I just really expect that at some point these are going to reverse themselves and we're going to see the paper assets begin to collapse and the real assets begin to uh, accelerate to the upside and we'll talk to you next time